This 57-year-old man was brutally murdered in his own apartment, and these are his three teenage daughters who killed him. So what happened in this family, and why do people mainly support murderers? In this video I'll tell you about one of Russia's most high-profile cases, the Hachaturan case. Three daughters, 17-year-old Maria, 18-year-old Angelina and 19-year-old Kristina, attacked their father, 57-year-old Mikhail Hachaturan. They stabbed him several dozen times and after that he died. Three teenage girls were initially taken into custody. They were charged with group murder by conspiracy and faced up to 20 years in prison. However, when the investigation revealed the terrible details of this family's life, the girls were recognized as victims and released from custody. Their father did such terrible things to his daughters that one day their patience ended. You will be shocked to learn how this family lived and how cruel fathers can be towards their children. So please, if you are under 18 years old or have an unstable emotional state, don't watch this video. I'll tell you the crazy details about this case as well as how these girls who committed the murder of their father live five years later. The story of this family began almost 25 years ago, when Mikhail Khachaturan met the future mother of his children, Aurelia Dunduk. Their first meeting took place in Moscow at a bus stop. At that time she was 17 years old, and he was 34. He was a wealthy man who had connections with the criminal world. She was a young, timid girl from neighboring countries, looking for her place in the world. He offered to ride her with her mother. This is how their relationship began. Mikhail invited her to live with him, and she agreed, since she had nowhere else to go. Almost immediately after they began to live together, Mikhail treated her rudely and cruelly. He started beating her when she was pregnant with her first child. He was the typical abuser, and she was the usual victim. They had a strong connection. Why this happens, it's probably better to ask psychologists. They didn't officially register the marriage, but only married in the church. Probably the man didn't want her to be able to inherit at least some of his property and lay claim to something. Mikhail Khachaturan registered his apartment and bank accounts in the name of his mother and sisters, a very sneaky move. A year after they started living together, Aurelia gave birth to her first child, son Sergei. When the boy was eight months old, the woman decided to visit her parents, but her husband forbade her to leave their apartment and slapped her in the face. Since then, she has not gone anywhere for five years. Mikhail wanted her not to go anywhere and give birth to children every year. A year after the birth of her son, their daughter Christina was born, then Angelina, and a year later Maria. Then she began secretly using contraception. Mikhail in turn decided that he was infertile and she got all her children from other men. This was a big reason for new scandals and fights. With the birth of children, Mikhail became more cruel. At first he treated the kids well and his wife took on all his anger. She was forbidden to leave the house without his permission and talk on the phone. Every time he was angry, he caused her pain and suffering. But why did she agree to such a life? Aurelia was mentally broken by years of abuse and cruelty. She also had no means of living since her husband forbade her to work and leave the apartment. He blamed her for living at his expense, but he himself used her as a house slave. She spent her days cooking, washing, cleaning and raising children. When their relationship began, she tried to run away with her son several times and ask for help. However, Mikhail had great connections in the police and criminal world, so he found them and threatened that if she did this again, he would kill both her and the child. 
That is why Aurelia was forced to agree to live with this tyrant. By the way, she was abused by her husband and all his relatives, his mother, sisters and other family members. They called her a lewd woman and did nothing when he beat her because they thought she deserved it. Mikhail Khachaturan behaved rudely and aggressively not only towards his wife, but also towards other people. Sometimes he parked in the wrong places, and when asked to move his car, he screamed and threatened to kill everyone. He also always had a gun with him. Neighbors often complained to the police about him, but no one there wanted to deal with this aggressive man. Apparently, Mikhail really had great connections in law enforcement agencies. However, no one from his circle ever knew exactly what he did for a living. Mikhail didn't work anywhere, but every day he went somewhere. Neighbors suspected he was selling illegal substances, but there was no evidence. Some of them also believed that he was involved in petty crime. Unknown people transferred money to his card every month. In the criminal world, a man like Hajituran is called a decider. This is a person who is intermediary between other representatives of the criminal world. However, the man was only a small link in this system. He could hardly be called rich. The family lived in a small city apartment and did not bath in luxury. Mikhail had a lot of weapons at home and never showed love to his family members. He often lost his temper, pulled out a gun and threatened to kill. At the same time, he considered himself a religious person. He often traveled to Israel, where he prayed a lot in church. Apparently, he believed that he could atone for his sins in this way. Every year, the man's character became worse and worse. He became more and more aggressive. But his wife could not do anything. One day she was hospitalized after being beaten. Doctors at the hospital asked her what happened. She honestly answered that her husband was to blame. Her words were recorded there, but no one did anything. It is generally believed that no one should interfere in family affairs in Russia, and once Mikhail beat her right at the police station, and no one did anything again, they said, we don't care, these are your family matters. Over the years, the relationship between father and son became more tense. Mikhail disliked Sergei because he suspected that he wasn't his native son. When the boy was only 16, his father kicked him out into the frosty street without money and things. The boy had to spend the night on the stairs. His mother sometimes gave him food and led him into the house when Mikhail slept. However, as soon as the father discovered this, he became furious and threatened to kill everyone. Sergei had to leave home forever. As you can see, three sisters, Christina, Angelina and Maria, lived in an atmosphere of fear and hatred since childhood. When they were little, their father treated them quite well. Teachers at the school where they studied said the girls were always cheerful and good-looking. The girls really loved going to school because it helped them escape from the challenging atmosphere in the family. Looking at some photos from the lives of these sisters, it's tough to imagine that terrible things actually happened in their family. They were ordinary teenage girls, they loved beautiful clothes, and when their father wasn't at home, they threw parties. This helped them forget all their problems. But over the years, their life became more and more unbearable. The father began to look at teenage girls particularly, and he lost all interests in his wife, Aurelia. In 2015, he decided to kick the mother of his children out of their apartment. The girls were 14, 15, and 16 years old then. After another scandal, he put a gun to his wife's head and said, either you leave or I'll kill you. The mother could not see her daughter since Mikhail categorically forbade this. The sisters submitted to his will because they were afraid of his anger. So, three teenage girls were left alone with their tyrant father. Since then, their life has become an absolute hell. First of all, Mikhail forbade his daughters to go to school. Now they were to become his house slaves. 
They had to clean, cook, and fulfill their dad's wishes. He set up a special bell. When he pressed the button, a signal sounded in the sister's room, indicating they urgently needed to come to their father and serve him. Mikhail could call his daughters at any time, even late at night. He also installed cameras in the front door to monitor their every move. For disobedience, he punished them with his fists and sometimes shot them with an air gun. In those rare moments when the girls came to school, they were often seen with scratches and bruises. All the neighbors, friends, and school teachers knew the family had a terrible atmosphere, but no one could do anything. Sometimes Mikhail came to school with a gun and threatened teachers. When girls almost stopped coming to school, the administration began an investigation. They contacted the guardianship authorities, but they did nothing. Sometimes teachers went to the Hajiduran family's apartment, but no one opened the door. It is unknown why no officials contacted the police, probably because Mikhail had great connections in the security forces. That is why the girls were afraid to complain, even when their father began to do absolutely terrible things. It all started in 2014, when the middle sister, Angelina, was only 14, together with her father. Father, they arrived in Israel and checked into a hotel. Mikhail took advantage of the fact that no one else was near them. He ordered his daughter to spend time alone in the bedroom with him and do indecent things. He said she was not his native daughter. When she was 18, she would have to become his wife. You have to understand that this man was mentally ill, so he said crazy things. When they returned home to Moscow, this continued, and when a year later he drove away his wife Aurelia, he began to involve other girls in his perverted games. One day he asked one of his daughters to bath with him. After the girl's mother left the apartment, the harassment occurred constantly. Numerous examinations have proved this. The girl's friends also confirmed this fact. Mikhail Khuchiduran sent obscene photos of his body to his daughter's classmates. Usually, the father spent time with each of his daughters separately, apparently so that the sisters would not discuss a common problem. Sometimes he would take one of his daughters into the room and ask for a massage, but this was far from just a massage. After one of these incidents, one of the sisters attempted to take her own life. However, she was saved at the hospital, and her father told the doctors that her daughter had simply mixed up the pills. One day he called his youngest daughter, Maria, into his room and asked her to help him treat prostatitis. The girl refused to do this. Then he put her in the car and drove her into the forest. He tied her to a tree and threatened her with a knife. The girl still refused. He left her alone in the forest connected to a tree, and only a few hours later he returned and took her home. The girls could not escape because they had lived in an atmosphere of violence. The father convinced his daughters that they were his slaves and must fulfill his every request. Also, the sisters didn't believe in the state's help, since they often saw that their father got away with everything. They knew his connections with the criminal world, and so they understood there was no point in contacting the police. There was no point in asking relatives for help either. Their mother, Aurelia, was an absolutely broken woman who could not help and was a victim herself for many years. Mikhail's relatives were always on his side and never believed he could harm his daughters. The girls could not escape because they had neither a source of income nor housing. In addition, the youngest of the sisters was a minor, so if she ran, her father would have returned her home, and the other sisters could not leave her. 
the sisters who are ready to continue to endure violence and bullying. Perhaps they were waiting for the younger sister to become an adult. In this case, they could all run away together. However, in July 2018, an event occurred that drove the girls crazy. They realized they could no longer endure the endless torture at that moment. Mikhail returned home after treatment in a psychiatric clinic. He was furious when he saw that the house was poorly cleaned. He found hair on the floor and things were scattered. He was also infuriated that his daughter spent more money than he allowed. Then he began calling his daughters into his room one by one and pepper sprayed their faces. Because of this, the older sister, Christina, who had asthma, fainted. When the father fell asleep, the girls decided to kill him. They knew he had a knife in the car, went downstairs and brought it to the apartment. They also found a hammer among the tools. When the father was sleeping in a rocking chair, they approached him from behind and began to strike him. Angelina beat him with a hammer and Maria with a knife. Christina Pepper sprayed his face. Mikhail didn't understand what was happening. He managed to reach his feet and exit their apartment onto the stairs. At that moment, Angelina took the knife from Maria's hands and stabbed him in the heart. Mikhail fell and died immediately. In total, he was stabbed at least 36 times. The neighbors heard screams but didn't call the police, since they had long been accustomed to the fact that scandals were constantly happening from their apartment where the Hachiduran family lived. The girls decided to fake their father's attack and stabbed themselves. So when they called the police, they said that their father was attacked them with a knife and they had to defend themselves. However, they later retracted this testimony and gave a sincere confession. During interrogation, the girls admitted their guilt and faced murder charges. The sisters were arrested but released after some time, as numerous examinations showed they acted emotionally unbalanced. The younger sister was declared insane at the time of the murder. Evidence was also revealed that the father systematically abused his daughters and did obscene intimate things. His mental condition was severe. He was treated in a psychiatric hospital before his death. Doctors characterized him as an angry, aggressive, unbalanced person. However, his closest relatives argued that Mikhail was decent and could not harm his daughters. They believe that the girls killed their father for material gain and also allegedly because their father forbade them to lead a sensual lifestyle. However, these accusations don't stand up to criticism. Firstly, the girls didn't have any material benefits after the death of their father. After all, Mikhail registered all his property to the name of his mother and sisters. Also, girls cannot be accused of a wild lifestyle. They sometimes throw parties to forget the scandals in the family. But all teenagers do this. Lawyers insist the girls killed their father in self-defense to prevent future acts of violence. They were indeed released from custody and allowed to be accessible for now. However, this case has been dragging on for more than five years and the fate of the sisters is still not determined. The girls were forbidden to live together and communicate with each other. They also could not use the internet or give interviews. The sisters had to get a job, but they could not plan their lives, for example, enter college or go to university because they could be sent to prison at any moment. Prosecutors allege that the daughters killed their father in a conspiracy. This is a severe crime. For this, they face up to 20 years in prison. Most reasonable people in Russia support girls because they understand that they are victims of violence and simply defend themselves. But another patriarchal part of society believes they are murderers and should be in prison. This story tells how three young girls took their father's life and ruined their own lives due to the indifference and inaction of everyone around them. 
Nobody cared when the girls missed school, when they came to class with bruises, when screams were heard from their apartment and when their father threatened everyone around with a gun. This is possible mainly because Russia still does not have a law on domestic violence. The police believe family fights are personal disputes between family members and no one should interfere. However, in reality such showdowns often lead to murder. Sometimes the victim dies and sometimes the tyrant. And if laws allowed victims to find protection, then there might be fewer such cases. The Hachadran sisters, whom their father abused for many years, could in reality go to prison and spend many years there. Do you think they deserve it? It's all for today. Goodbye. And remember, evil is near.